Hello everybody, this is Rollo Twinner Bros and welcome to Selling Your 3D Creations. In this presentation we hope to show you how to sell items that you may create for Poser and Dash Studio. Uh, things like models, poses, clothing, uh, textures, tutorials, or just about anything that you like. The first thing we would like to cover is uh, the difference between what we call a vendor and what we call a broker. And basically with a, a vendor it's a place where you can uh, place all your products online for sale, they take a small portion of the sales price or what that it's sold for uh, is in a, in a way fees. Usually it's done through PayPal uh, but with this uh, this route you have the full control of the product, the selling price and of course uh, you get more of a return usually in most cases. Uh, you could go to places like Payloads or PayPal, uh, excuse me, PayHip and now uh, to get things like that done and we'll real quickly uh, well we'll go ahead and just explain what a broker is now a broker basically they have guidelines you have to submit to uh, whenever you want to have a product you want to put on uh, on their site they have to approve it it's got to go through their quality control they'll test it uh, the images ha uh, for the promo images have to be the sizes that they determine and they'll give you all that you know once you become a uh, uh, artist a published artist on a broker site they'll give you all those details of course they usually collect more of the money they get like 50 percent or more uh, usually it's around 50 percent uh, and there are a few sites that uh, uh, so that have uh, tiered uh, brokerages which we might explain later but for the most part they get 50 percent so basically if you sell something for ten dollars you're only going to get five whereas like at a vendor site depending on what their fees are you might sell something for ten dollars and they'll only withheld one and you'll get nine dollars back but then again uh, there's a lot more marketing you're uh, responsible for the vendor and when the broker they'll take care of some of the marketing like the initial release and things like that. We'll go to our website really quick and show you the ones that we use. So here on winterbros.com uh, uh, in our products tab we have all the uh, vendor and broker sites here at the top that we uh, use in our product catalog. Uh, Render Hub is one that does a tiered returns which like you get uh, they you get 50% uh, if you have 10 items and if you have uh, up to 20 items you get like 60% uh, up to 30 items you get 70% of the money that's sold from sales and if you have 40 or 41 or more something like that you get a 80% return uh, from every sale so it's a uh, that one's got a more of a tiered brokerage and of course we have pay payloads and pay up or the ones we was talking about that are vendor sites uh, there's renderosity Fantasy's Realm, DeviantArt, you can sell things at DeviantArt. Um, then we have Dash 3D, and of course if you have any tutorials or things in PDF format uh, or readable format, you can go to Google Books. Of course there's ShareCG now allows selling things, and of course YouTube it has some monetized stuff for like videos and stuff, but for the most part it's more for just putting online videos. Now we'll move on to where to sell your stuff. So basically, if uh, you're making Poser products, uh, Renderosity is actually now the official Poser site uh, since the shutdown of Content Paradise, which was the uh, original site at Smith Micro for Poser products and Poser-related products. Of course, uh, Renderosity does cover uh, Poser, Dash Studio, and some other 3D uh, applications. Of course, now if you're making Dash Studio items, uh, you might want to consider going to uh, Dash 3D first. Uh, because they actually are the developers in, uh, uh, for Dash Studio and if they accept you as a an artist uh, you can make some good money there especially if you have a good hit and then again for the general stuff if you create stuff in uh, some of the FBX formats or OBG, OBJ or whatever uh, or even if you do Poser and Dash Studio products you can uh, just pick a, a vendor site or a uh, non-specific site uh, like Render Hub uh, covers a wide category of different uh, 3D applications and of course they do have the tiered commissions and then again you can sell it yourself through uh, sites like Payloads, Payhip, there's a lot of sites vendor sites where you can have your own store. So now we'll cover exclusivity and basically what exclusivity means is basically uh, some sites require exclusivity that just means that if you sell in your product on their site you cannot sell it anywhere else even on your own uh, private websites or your own private store on one of the vendor sites. Then of course non-exclusive means you can sell it wherever you like uh, including their store. Um, uh, Dash 3D is, it has an exclusive selling uh, policy 
So basically, if you sell it to Das3D, you can sell it on there. And then, of course, Renderosity has a choice. You can choose a product as exclusive or not exclusive when you submit it, if you're an artist there. And uh, it, you, so you have the choice. And then a lot of sites don't even have a choice. Basically, you can, like at RenderHub, you can sell it at RenderHub and anywhere else you like. So you just have to make sure that you, if you do sell some of your products on an exclusive site, that you maintain that exclusivity so that you don't get dropped off as a uh, seller there. The next thing we talk about is pricing your products. So your price of your product should be uh, kind of a result of the quality of the workmanship. Some products take have a lot of details and a lot of uh, time and effort went into them to get the look that they are and the popularity of what it is. If you're selling a, a product that there's a lot of them out there, uh, your price is going to have to be a little lower. Uh, or if it's uh, so, also if you want, like clothing for female models uh, in the 3D market, clothing uh, styles and accessories and hair and those kind of things, and morphs for the female models seem to be big. Uh, and for the male models, clothing and accessories too. Uh, for the fantasy world, a lot of weapons. Uh, but if you do that, you got to make sure you create something that's unique. And then, of course, most of the Procreate sites, uh, you can determine what uh, price you want to set on the product when you submit it. Of course, there might be some uh, policies that guide what the price should be, some charts that tell uh, if there's so many components or whatever, uh, or textures or different things. Might can, uh, you might have some uh, standards established by your brokerage that you have to adhere to. And, of course, they can change the price uh, if they want to from what you submitted. We've had a tutorial series that we've submitted. Uh, uh, at 995 through 3D, but once they published it, they published them at 3495. Of course, you got to remember their their goal is to sell your product and make money too, so they're going to set a price that they think is a fair market value. So before we move on to the next topic, well, let's go quickly show you. Uh, I forgot to show you. We're going to go to that. So Dash 3D is at www.dash3d.com. If you click on there, uh, you can go to the bottom and. Uh, click this publishing tab and that'll take you where you need to go to uh, publish on their site. It'll tell you things about how to become a published artist, uh, some things, some information, these guidelines here. Here's some of the guidelines to talk about for your art that you submit for your promos and different things you need to know. And of course they have to accept you as a published artist uh, too. You you just uh, you apply and then they'll uh, they'll uh, send you, you know, start corresponding with you via email and tell you what you need to know and what you need to do. Of course, you go to Renderosity, which is www.renderosity.com. Uh, you can do the same thing there. Uh, I couldn't find the link right here on their home page, but I do believe uh, if you once you get a login, I think you'll get a few more options. Uh, but basically, if you, if nothing else, you can go down here and use the uh, you can find the contact us button and where you sell products through uh, in Renderosity is normally through the marketplace here. So. That's where they uh, show their stuff. And then, of course, like I was telling you, some of that uh, initial release uh, advertising you might get. Here you go. So we'll go here to these new releases, let it load. And here's some new stuff that just came out at Renderosity. And you can see, uh, here's the types. You can see kind of like these are the promos. Promo images are these images you see here. Of course, when you go to a product, you have to have that. You've got to create the description and all kinds of stuff. So those are a couple of sites where you can sell things uh, for you, that you create. Of course, really quickly, we'll cover commissions. Basically, commission is what portion of the sale that you get. And of course, there's a range of percentages. It depends on the brokerage. And of course, vendor sites have a fees. Uh, they're not so much commissions. But uh, like for most of them, it's going to be they're going to keep 50%. And you're only going to get 50%. So if you sell some for let's say twenty dollars is the selling price and it sells you're gonna get ten dollars and they're gonna keep ten sorry about that typo down there on discount but then again you can also know that for brokerages any coupons that customers have or any discounts that are applied go first and then you'll get your fifty percent after that which of course means it would be a little lower now some sites like Rindo or Renderosity uh, for software products if you're into the programming side of the house uh, they give you a seventy percent commission on each sale and of course, we have RenderHub, which has the tiered returns, which are based upon how many number of products you have submitted and on your in your store at their site, which are 50, 60, 70, 80 percent, which is pretty good. So basically, the more you put on their site, the more you're going to get back. So it's good for you, and it's good for them too. 
Another important thing to know is if you're going to become a uh, an artist, a uh, published artist in the uh, 3D world uh, through a brokerage, uh, or even for your own stuff through a vendor site, uh, you're going to have to create all basically all of the stuff that has to do with your product. You've got to create a nice description, a text description that tells about the product, what it's good, why you should buy, buy it, uh, where it can be used, what figures or whatever props it might work with. And you want to make sure that it reads well so the purchaser, if they, when they read it, does want to uh, buy it. Of course, uh, when you submit your products, you're going to have to have some keywords. And this is mostly for a search engine, so it gets a lot of hits when people are using maybe like Google or Yahoo or whatever to search for stuff. Or Bing, which is a big one now with the Microsoft side of the world. And then, of course, the imagery, which is all the promo images. Uh, you're going to have to create all those yourself. Uh, they're gonna each brokerage will ha or even vendors will have sizes that they allow. Uh, sometimes it's an exact specific size. Sometimes it's a range of uh, at least 800 by 800, but no more than 1200 by 1200 or some definition like that. So when you uh, join, uh, become an artist on a broker site or uh, open account on the vendor site to do your own, uh, you'll just have to adhere to whatever guidelines they set. We'll move over into marketing. Now, marketing is the tricky part. Uh, for If you go to a brokerage, you're usually going to get an initial uh, a release announcement through a newsletter uh, or even online uh, on their main page or some of their sales splashes. Uh, and then sometimes you'll get some follow-up uh, coverage too. But that's a lot of times you might have to coordinate that with their marketing department or depending on the site, you might actually have to buy ad space uh, if you're an exclusive uh, been, uh, artist on some sites, you get uh, some free advertising, uh, which is basically marketing, which helps to drive your sales. But of course, if you have a big hit, if you if you create a product that is just everybody wants it, and there's thousands and thousands of sales, you're, the, the companies and the brokerages, they're going to give you uh, that coverage uh, without you having to put as much into it. Because they're they, while something's popular, they want to make money too, so they're going to keep it covered too. That's kind of a gold nugget. <clears throat> it's hit and miss, uh, especially when you're new in the market. You may not know what's going to be selling. So, if you want to sell through a site like Das 3D or Renderosity, visit their site and see what kind of things are popular. Uh, you can see in there the top sellers and see what kind of products they offer, and see if they don't fit in the category of stuff that you do. A couple insights that we've learned over the last uh, decade or so is um, if you don't try something, you never know if you're going to succeed. So if you have a, you want to be an artist and you think you're good at it and you've tried it and you made some stuff that you thought was really good, um, get us get some professional opinions. Sometimes family and friends will say, "Oh, that's nice. That's really cool. You ought to sell that." And it may not be really quite up to par. So try to get an honest, objective opinion from somebody. If you know somebody like that, or in the artist world to a forums or something. Another thing is, if you become a, an artist selling stuff, try to network with other artists. Uh, they'll give you support. Uh, they can get great advice. Sometimes I might say that uh, that kind of item doesn't seem to sell too well when they tried it. Or they might say, hey, this might work. This type, this category items like clothing or hair sells really great on this site. So you might get some good advice from other artists if you uh, network with them and connect up and kind of build some online friendships. Then, of course, be prepared to be hurt a little bit because, you know, when you create something, you're all excited about it, and then uh, the uh, brokerage says they're going to decline it. They don't they don't feel that product uh, meets their criteria or it won't sell very well or for whatever reason. Uh, that's going to kind of be hurtful, but get back on your feet and keep going. Uh, and also, it could be they, they accept it, they sell it, and it just doesn't do very well. So you never know. Sometimes the market is a little fishy. Uh, things go up and down what people like and sometimes what's happening in the real world is kind of reflected in the 3d market another thing is don't try to do everything uh, try just to do things that you're interested in and that you like because then you have the passion and the time to put the details and the things in there that make your product a lot more nicer and sellable uh, to the world than other people's and if you can come up with something that's unique search the internet uh, however, whichever way you'd want to do it and if you have something you think is unique see what's all out there and just so you have an ideal before you actually uh, get let down by trying to submit it somewhere and finding out it's uh, really a pop you know there's a lot of them out there well in closing we just like to say we hope you enjoy this video presentation 
Um, if you like this video presentation, you like to support the kind of things we do, uh, sometimes they're free or sometimes paid for, please visit our website at www.winterbros.com. And uh, if you don't find anything that you like, that's fine. But if you would, please just tell everybody about our site, uh, your friends, your family, your associates. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and have a great day.